Hello, my name is Mark Podrzebowski. I work for Ascent and I've worked either as a CAD trainer or a cook room development for the last 14 years. Uh, today I want to talk to you about some of the display window options that you have within Katia 3D Experience um, 2022X specifically. Um, today we're going to look at the action pad, the app options, and the object properties windows. These windows can be very helpful, giving you quick access to commonly used commands within Katia. However, uh, the customizations that you might either intentionally or unintentionally do to them can cause some frustration if you didn't realize you made those changes or trying to locate them again. So to uh, illustrate this, uh, within the 3D experience, we have our action bar, which has a lot of our commands. But there's going to be commands that we need quick access to that either exist on this action bar or don't exist on the action bar and we have other ways of getting to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the screen, go to display, and in the drop down list that appears, and this list does vary depending on which app you're in, we're in the Katia Part Design app, uh, we will see the app options, the object properties, and the action pad. I'm going to turn one of those on and see this window appear. Now it can be moved around to different locations, and in fact if you have multiple screens you can move it off the screen onto a different screen uh, so that you can save space for your actual modeling, which is kind of handy. Um, though that can create some problems later on I'll talk about. Now this action or app options window gives us some tools for being able to uh, customize filters for selection filters for being able to customize what's being displayed and uh, kind of add-ons to some of the commands we're doing here like creating datums um, or defining something as the in-work object. Um, to turn on the other windows, we can do the same thing. Right-click on the screen, go to Display. I'm going to go to Object Properties. This one uh, gives you the properties generally related to an object. So if I selected a surface, I can change its color. Uh, I could change the line thickness or the transparency, uh, just depending on what type of object you choose. So if I chose this plane, I can come over here and choose a color or make it red. So it shows up red for us. Uh, this surface, I'll make it a different color, we can make it purple. Um, and those are the same options you would normally get if you right clicked and went to properties and went to the graphic tab, you'd be able to change it and reset those values to something else. Uh, the third option, right-click display, is going to be the action pad. This is kind of a, a list of uh, commonly used functions that are found in the action pad. So instead of having to go to the action, uh, the action bar to find these objects, we can go to the action pad instead uh, and have quick access to them. But as you see here, this takes up quite a bit of space. And you can move them around, but it takes up a good amount of real estate on your screen, which I want to be able to use for my model. One thing we can do is we can take these uh, windows and stack them on top of one another. When you stack them on top of one another, now we have little tabs at the top to be able to pick which one we want quick access to and be able to perform those functions. Okay, now we can move the whole thing around if we need. And you can dock them to different locations. So here it's docked to the side. If I pull that away, which it wants to be locked up there now, so I'll pull all three of them away separately. Here they're docking side by side. You see kind of a blue highlight up here, there we go, now it's docked to that element. It takes up more real estate. If I take this one away and try to put it at the top of the screen, again it takes up a lot of real estate, but we can minimize that and be able to scroll up and down if you wish to use it in that manner. Or it can be put on this side. Now, what you need to be careful of with the side is, yes, you can put more than one there, and it puts tabs. And in the current display state, I put it in there, right? It works out pretty well. As we see what's going on, and we can pick the tab that we want, and we can use those functions. But if this little arrow here gets selected, it almost becomes invisible, especially if you didn't know it was there to begin with. Now, the issue is there's an arrow here to click on to get it to expand. If you're not looking for that, you may be trying to find these windows, go to display and turn off 
object properties and nothing seems to happen, go to turn on object properties again, it does appear when you turn it back on, so that does make it more accessible and easily to see. But if you know it's turned on and can't seem to find it, look to see that this arrow over here on the right isn't collapsed. And there's a lot of windows in the 3D experience that can do this. Now, if it disappears over and over again on you, you can come up here and click this little pin. It will stay there for us. You have to manually click on the arrow to get it to collapse again. And we can move these around. Now, I did mention that you can move these onto a different uh, screen if you have multiple monitors, which is great. Um, and for most users, that's not an issue. I can't show you that because of the way this uh, recording is set up. But one thing to be aware of is if you move them to a separate screen, and then let's say you have a laptop that you disconnect from those other screens. Um, when you go to fire up the 3D experience again, these windows that are on a separate screen can still be placed out there on that separate screen even though you're no longer connected to a second monitor. So you won't be able to find them because they're off your current screen. Uh, with that, we can restore their positions of our settings to be able to get them to come back, but uh, the easiest thing to do would be to connect your monitors up and make sure that before you disconnect them, move these windows onto the main screen that uh, would be available if you find yourself connecting, disconnecting from your monitors a lot. If you don't find yourself in that scenario, it wouldn't be an issue. Okay. Um, but mostly the action pad is customizable. If I right click in here and go to customize mode, I can add commands to it while these other windows are pretty much what you see is what you get. Um, and you can use this one again for selection filters and for uh, add-ons to the commands you already have. This one is for object properties. Hope that helps.